During the Minnesota Rocker Home Series this weekend, we will be raising money to stop police brutality and help rebuilding efforts in Minnesota. Our players have chosen to wear this message on their jerseys. Hashtag justice for George Floyd. The Call of Duty League stands firmly against racism, inequality and injustice. Let's make change together. Activision Blizzard has made a donation and set a goal of raising over $4 million to help provide transformative opportunities to black Americans to eliminate systemic racism and discrimination. Go to callofdutyleague.com forward slash impact for organizations recommended by our teams and links with information on how to get involved. Hello and welcome back to the Minnesota Home Series. We're in time now for the semi-finals. And again, before we get into the fun and games, just a reminder that there is a lot of serious stuff going on in the world right now, you know, and as much fun as we are having, it is super important not to let it all just get lost in the source. 24 hour news cycles, everything we read on Twitter, how easy it is for us to lose focus of what really, really matters in the world. And I implore you to do what you can this weekend. I implore you to keep doing what you can for the remainder of our lives until we do what we until we eliminate racism, until we do the very best job we can to get rid of this, because this is not okay. And I'm holding myself back from letting profanities rip. I know I've already done that on the broadcast this weekend, but I'm very passionate about this sort of thing. And only we can make a difference here. Anyway, we're running out of time. I love you all. Love each other. Love my boys, Momo and Nameless Dudes. Very excited to get into this game. And uh, yeah, it's, all right. it's, the, it's the second semi-final we've got today before we go back to our home series grand finals. I, I'm speechless. I can't believe the Gorillas almost did it. This has been yeah. an insane oh. weekend, boys. <laughs> like, but we have a good one ahead of us. We've got the Florida Mutineers going up against Dallas Empire. Uh, Phil, just like high-level thoughts on this. Uh, again, I've just kind of... Learn to expect the unexpected, especially this tournament and what Gorillas have done and shown us there. Um, but going into this, I think, yes, there is a clear cut favor. I think everyone is already kind of lining up that final already. But let's not, not forget exactly what the Mutineers have brought to the table yesterday. Uh, I will say, Skies for me looked incredible. Individuals from the Mutineers looked incredible. Dallas, though, they do look, I feel, uh, a step ahead. I am leaning their way. I think they are the heavy favorite. And I expect them to see them in the final. Bro, I think it's a very, very fair assessment there, Phil. Uh, we've got those Game Fuel keys to victory on screen in just a moment, and we're going to be looking at Dallas up first. And for a lot of people, Dallas are the faves coming into this one, man. I mean, what do they got to do to bring the win here? Uh, I think what's been most impressive about Dallas, I mean, obviously Shotzi's just been lighting it up. He continues to be dominant, but Hook is having one of his best events right now as well. He's playing that perfect support role, whereas on other teams, Hook's had to have been that aggressive SMG that's taking over games. He's really thriving in that support role, and he's playing great. So if he keeps that up, they should be perfectly fine. Like, this is a series where both those guys can tear up the opposition. So look at Hook and Shotzi to continue to be the dynamic duo on the map. Right on, man. I do like that. Shotzi, of course, we've been talking about him being Rookie of the Year already. Not a surprise whatsoever. Let's take a look at the Game Fuel Keys to Victory for Florida now, Nameless. Yeah, so in this series, I think Pharaoh and Havoc are key in this one. They're like the sub-slayers on the squad that are going to have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best SMGs in the game. And for Havoc, he's having one of his best events so far. He's been playing great, but we know he can be that X-Factor at times, or he wins or loses you a game. So very important for him to remain consistent. And then Pharaoh to step it up. Hasn't had the best event so far. When they did find success and win, and they were great, was when Pharaoh was on point. So going to need him to step it up and Skies to be that role player because I do not think Skies can take over as an AR in this series. There's too many players that are going to be a threat to him on the map. It's going to be in Pharaoh and Havoc's hands. Yeah, he's got to do a lot now to uh, to wiggle around the stellar lineup of the Dallas Empire and see if he can't make an impact there on the map. Interesting call here as well, and you didn't bring it up in the keys to victory, but Awakening has been playing great for Florida Mutineers. Yeah, he's, he's been fantastic. I mean, he's just like a player who's come in and he just plays aggressive and he opens up the lanes. He's a great role player. The Nameless, thank you as always, brother. Take care. We'll thank see you. you on the other side. Now it's time to get into the games. Momo, oh boy. Time for our semi-final. The first it one certainly was is. Rip Rora, dude. And this one, not going to disappoint. Yeah. Uh, Florida, I've actually got the first pick. They've picked Gunrunner or Hardpoint. We are going to stick on this for Domination and S&D. So the first three are going to be Gunrunner. So sit down, buckle in, and get ready for uh, a bit of a ride on Gunrunner. I personally love the map, so it's going to be a great one. A uh, quick stat check before we get into it, though. Dallas, 7 of 5 on this map. And Mauve, 3 and 2 for Florida. So both positive, but as we get into the first one here, jumping on board with none other than a Movement Magician than his shot. I know, he's so slick. He's sl sliding all over the place, man. Big fan of his work. So far off to a nice start for the Mutineers. Going to get a little bit of time here as Empire have to reposition back on up. But again, the favorable side to be spawning on. I've said at the start of every single hard fight during gun runners because it's very, very important. Shotzi trying to find those openings is 
keeping the hard point time going the way of Empire as much as it possibly can, but still keeping that defensive line held. Watch out for that number four, Pharaoh, trying to be the impact player right now for his boys. There's the first kill. Watch those arrows now pivot. Got to try and take care of Pharaoh. He's going for the high impact play here. Hugo's going to back on up. They're going to try to reinforce that backside of the hard point, but Pharaoh's in. Very, very sneaky. Sneaky indeed here, number four, of course, being Pharaoh, and he can be just a nuisance, and one kill, great, two kills, even better, he's going to get taken down, that's going to be from Hugh, right at the back of the map there, and you see that mini-map just spread out, the white arrows disperse now, with three seconds left on the middle timer, you see a 25-point lead for the Mutineers, but I think Dallas, they'll be able to choke that one up, say, so, you know what, we can hold this out for longer, and get an advantage, Illy taking control of the top, Duke down low is going to find himself another double, however, the Mutineers are putting pressure on the front, it looks like the Dallas Empire, though, they're going to hold him off this time around, let's see how long for, though. Yeah, Shotzi, once again, great movements, somebody called Shotzi Spider-Man on Twitter the other day, and right now, I just watched him scale straight to the top of the, the rafters <laughs> here, and he's finding a couple of kills, he's got more out of that one, he's still going, and now he's down low, he's going to be thwip thwapping, almost manages to get awakening as well. Hard point now in the hands of the Mutineers for the time being. Watch that counter-attack now developing slowly from the Empire. So they're going to try to get back on point. And again, solid amount of time garnered from the first hard point. Not something we see too often, but trying to keep players off of it is very, very difficult. For these players now, just trying to maintain pressure on the second while making one eye towards the rotation, and that's going to be what the Empire are doing. Already two players in position now going for it. Once again, Pharaoh trying to be that first man in for the Mutineers, trying to make the difference. One thing I do want to touch on as well, Awakening debut here at the CDL. I think he's, first of all, made a huge impact. Let's not forget who he's played. Chicago, then obviously Gorillas, and now Dallas. He's had two, and then make it three, because Gorillas have been darn right amazing. Um, in incredible teams. He's really made an impact against some of the best teams by all means. So, uh, again, just to touch on that, he's uh, really standing out for me right now. He's currently six and five, and really fitting in with this Mutineers roster. Trying to get to another grand final, of course. They have to take down the Empire. And on that Empire, Hugh is going to shut down Havoc. Illy onto Awakening. And as we see that hard point go back in favor of the Mutineers just for now. The Dallas Empire pushing through that bottom middle. We'll see if they're successful. Yep, see if they can get it done. Pipe's cleaned out now from Awakening, trying to make his way through mid. Slow, steady rotation across the map. Not an easy one to do. Hugh caught out unaware there by Pharaoh in the showers from the bottom water. Luke's still dripping. Managed to get that kill. Have it once again on point there. A couple of seconds going to be going the way of the Mutineers. And every little helps. I mean, this is one thing that we do talk about enough in the COD League and scrap time. Getting those final five, six seconds can make the difference when it really comes down to the end. So no second is wasted here for either of these teams. Empire on point. Gearing up now for the push. Mutineers are trying to make it a two-pronged attack, but for now, oh, it may just work out. It looks like Awakening. He's going to be able to open up the second flank. There he is. Comes in from behind. Managed to get another one. Makes that hard point that little bit safer there for the Mutineers. Yeah, so far so good. And a very even score at 69 to 69 here as we go into the next rotation. 30 seconds left, of course. Driven by the cargo containers. Awakening find himself a double. Ilian Crimsic will find himself on the wrong side of Awakening. Ooh. As will Hugh. As will Shotzi. Four in a row for Awakening. I say four. That's just on the feed. It was actually six kills in a row. This man on a mission, Miles. What a rampage that was from Awakening, and we're starting to pull away for the Mutineers. Dealing the damage right now to the Empire. However, Empires are made a tough start, let's face it. Awakening with another two there on point. He's absolutely ripping it this game. 16 and 8 overall. Half one once again going to the hands of Empire off the rotation. Pharaoh. Can't quite make it happen as he takes care of him. Sky's a player we talked about before. Again, has to contend with some mighty ARs in this game. He's been shot, so he just outmaneuvering him there, finding that easy kill. And Crim6 watching the cut across. However, Havoc managed to get close. If he and the rest of the squad can make it through now, yep, an open lane from Pharaoh. Watch those arrows flood in towards the hard point now. As Pharaoh continues to keep the good work coming from up front. Here we now go. The break straight into the hard point. As Meeting is trying to find these kills. One thing that I find so special about the Mutineers as well is their players work so well together, but individually, I think we can all, including yourself, might as well, we'll be able to think of a time where individually, where they've all gone off and kind of really rose to the occasion. Oh, you yeah. know, that can be Havoc, Pharaoh, Frosty, Skies, or what I'm seeing now in Awakening. Uh, we, we heard Nameless talking about Skies, whether he can be that assault rifle player to really kind of stand out against a team like the Empire, and I think that is going to be very, very hard to do. But right now, 
It's a good job all round for everyone on the board. 17 and 15 there for Havoc. We've got 17 for Farah. As again, we go back to the second rotation, the middle half point here. Huge going to be caught down low in the showers as Crim6 does answer back. But a very close game. Marcy sees fantastic to see. The Mutineers really big bringing it here on CDL Sunday. Yep, and outside of that scrap time, it's difficult for the Mutineers to keep that lead. However, Frosty desperately trying to make the push in towards second battling for spawns for the next hard point. And again, the battle may be raging here in the front. That's where the gunfights and the times being garnered, but it's a dangerous thing. Dallas have committed a lot to the defense to retaining spawns for second hard point. They've let a lot of time slip by here on the first one. There's only Alien 25 screen. seconds left, though. It's uh, oh, not yeah. too much, sorry to interrupt there. We've got uh, Dallas trying Fine, to creep kill. up on them. Uh, number eight, though, I think you, you pointed out there, Miles, obviously, retaining those spawns is so, so important. You see Clayster, Illy, already locking that down. Look at the spawns from Mutineers, though, Miles. They are so far away down at the warehouse. That is not ideal. Yeah, it was Shotzi there at Minecart, just running forward, finding those kills, killing them out there. So they're not going to be able to spawn at Minecart. They're going to be spawning even further away. So it's like another long journey. But again, the scrap time's keeping the Mutineers just ahead at this time. They're able to break hard points. And lovely kill from Havoc there, but you have to make these kills count. They're going to be a lot more consistent, and now you have to go for the contest. One more wave is pretty much all it's going to take now for the mutineers to get on there, and that's a nice bit of kills. Watch these hills. Watch the arrows. They're going for it, man. They're going to dive right on in. Awakening leads the charge. Pharaoh now going for the high ground. He can't quite get it done as Awakening gets another there. Pharaoh's on point now, and that's been a solid looking break there. The mutineers, they may be in. A contest at the very least if they can get a player on point, and now you have to contend with the Dallas Empire on spawn. So it was 69 to 69, and now it's 128 to 128 here. Uh, this is a very level playing field. These guys Ooh. are bringing it. We know how important it is to get off to a good start. Frosty has had a little bit of a shaky one. However, a double kill in the kill feed there. Really, and Crim6 will go down. If Frosty starts to step up the slain power, Mutineers could really bury this game. They do have the lead. They don't have the spawns. But number one, Awakening. Can be a big impact player as he finds you there. Look at the minimap. He's got number seven charging in. That's going to be Crim6 here. Awakening versus Krim at the back is Awakening just tries to stay alive and he's actually going to be very successful in doing so. He's going to sneak around the back. Krim has not been able to deal with him. Oh. Not been able to find him and Awakening! Shutting things down left, right and center. I mean, that's fantastic game awareness and blistering skill at the same time. Awakening, a worthy pickup, it has to be said. 160 now and climbing. You may have that Dallas Empire on the rotations, but it doesn't seem to matter. The breaks from the Mutineers are getting very creative. They're getting very naughty and they're working out fine. 30 seconds remain here on Minecarts. Continued pressure from the front from the Dallas Empire. They are being met with hands at the cannons of the Mutineers ringing out. Not a problem for them. And another 20 going to go their way. Empire now starting to look a little shaky. They have not been able to keep it as close as the mutant is. What have they got on the bag of tricks, Phil? They're going to keep this one going. And the final 10 will push them to 100 points. 193, 135. The biggest lead that we've seen so oh, far no. here <laughs> in map number one. I was talking about scrap time. They left it. <laughs> yeah, they, they didn't even want it. They didn't even want it. It's fine, Miles. Forget about the scrap time. Over to the cargo containers they go. There's plenty of time, and Frosty certainly is stepping it up. And that was a point we, we made there was, you know, if he kind of puts the slaying power back in, they can really run away with this game, and he's doing so with the five kills. Freeze guy's going to get shut down. The kill feed all white here. As you hit five in a row, make it. I don't even know who got that kill right yeah, there. It was, was shots <laughs> in the end. He actually got Huke as well, so he ended that run. Illy now starting to spring to life. 21-24 for him. Lovely hip fire off the hop. Vero goes down. This is important time for the Dallas Empire right now. Frosty through the smoke. The hip fire connects. And again, just back and forth we go. It's just pandemonium there from above. It doesn't seem so dangerous, but when you get in close, absolute chaos for these two teams. Frosty still trying to keep that hard point time ticking. Over 200 points we go now for the Florida Mutineers. And again, this is where things start to get a little dangerous. Dallas Empire have got to mix up the play here. They have to do what they can to still maintain the rotation, still get the most time they possibly can, but not get broken as easily as they have by the Mutineers. Once again, over to the warehouse we go. Here comes the break from Florida. 33, 26, Havoc. Oh my God. Awakening, 32 and 21 here. Havoc adds to it. Awakening oh adds a bit too much. And Pharaoh is in. And oh the pro God. come through like that. Miles, you echo the words. Oh my God. Oh what my God. is happening here? It's like they can hold we... it. They can win it here, Miles. They can win it here every single time. We look at a Florida player. They're picking up kills. They're not going to get any more there. But Frosty's still on point. Here we go. Huke tries to make the jump in through the front. But Frosty says nay. And now you've got another push. Has to be a good one now from the Empire. You've got to make the hit big. Frosty's still finding that hard point time. Over 1 minute and 45 seconds to his name so far. Havoc has been disgusting. 37 kills now for him. Frosty's still going. Frosty's still on point. And my, my, the Florida Mutineers. They're going to take map number one. 
Frosty then was, I want to say, and I'm making up numbers, kind of making up numbers here, man. He was like 8 and 18. It was a poor start. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he had was. like 10 seconds of hill time. He ends, I believe, at a negative 2, which isn't the best. With a minute, what is that? He ends, Frosty, 22 and 23. Negative 1 with a minute 52 on the hill. He stepped it up. That last quarter of the, of the, the game was all Frosty. I'd love to go back and see his quote unquote worst KD at the, uh, you know, the specific period <laughs> of time. Um, but overall, Frosty really ramped it up, changed that game. Incredible stuff all around. But the Mutineers here to fight for, of course, that grand uh, for the for the final. Yeah, for that home series finals. Here's another one, dude. F Havoc almost got 40 kills. Just in case we didn't, you know, bring that up enough that throughout the game. You know, we talked about it in the previous, in the in the build-up, sorry, with the game field yep. keys to victory. Nameless was talking about Havoc needing to go big. Havoc went huge, like massive performance out of him. Not a disappointing start for Florida Mutineers. I think for Empire, it's weird, man. It's like you look at the way they played and it was still very, very well, like solid gameplay from start to finish. The kills were good. The rotations were on point. They just kept getting broken by the Mutineers. They had a game plan there and it was just... It was impossible for them to, to hold that hard point for any considerable amount of time. We've just received it. Frosty was seven and ten before he started to really turn things around, Phil. So yeah, he was that was low in the oh, kill. Bro, feed. I saw him worse than seven and ten. I'm so <laughs> confident of that. I know you heard it in your ear, I heard it too, Mass, but I he was he was having a shocker. <laughs> it got yeah. worse, I believe. I'm I'm pretty sure. And it, uh, the reason I'm quoting it to get worse is because when it got better, it was an incredible transformation. Um, but credit to the Mutineers, 1-0 in the series, who'd have thought? Yeah, who would have thought? The US, uh, the quick scope brought to you by the US Air Force will be on your screen in just in moments. And again, that <laughs> is what we're looking at, boys and girls. This is another top five team. The Mutineers looking fantastic. Again, a, a recent resurgence. Team changes seem to be the thing that keep Florida swinging here in these moments. But uh, again, the Dallas Empire, arguably one of the best teams in the league. I think Shotzi is one of the best teams, best players in the world. And uh, to this point in time, I still think Dallas is the number one squad right now. So this is an absolute must win for Florida, obviously. But I think for to change change the way we look at power rankings, change the way we think about these teams overall. Huge, huge series for Florida. And again, we hope you love Gunrunner, friends, because there's three of them. Two more coming. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot for sure. We've got Romancer as well. I'm sure we're going to get to see it. It's going to be an incredible series. And interesting enough, obviously, Mutineers, they're looking for their second title as well. Yes, we're talking Dallas. We're talking FaZe, Huntsman. They're out. Uh, a lot of talk around the town. Do not rule out the Florida Mutineers. No, not at all. Don't rule anyone out in this competition. And that's uh, something we have been saying for a while now. And it's very, very true. The Dallas Empire are coming into this one as champions. But the one player who's really making a big difference here is Shotzi. Is he truly the Rookie of the Year? Oh, sorry. I thought we were Apparently. throwing the video. My bad. Shotzi. Phil. I thought, a Shotzi, I, Tell thought me, a, I thought a Shotzi piece was coming up, but uh, but either way, I think we're going to get to see that. Is Shotzi a rookie there? Let's just treat it as I was building the suspense there, Miles, and just letting the silence do the do the talking. Uh, it Shotzi, was, it was actually, me... I was waiting for the audience to answer us back, but I forget we're not in a public <laughs> place anymore. I, I was waiting for the crowd to say yes, and I was like, oh, what am I doing? I'm in my bedroom. Uh, here it is. Here it is. Uh, Shotzi on your screen. Is, is he the rookie? No, you got to sometimes have a little bit of fun with it. He's been incredible. Uh, yesterday, the one thing that really stood out to me was the, the shot under the vehicle onto the bomb, clutching that 1v2. And what excites me about shots is, first of all, he, he's just so young and so much time to improve, but also, has anyone, and I know there, there's obviously a few answers, but like so young joined such veteran players? Because obviously, at this period of time, the veteran see that he is surrounded by in Clay Shrew and Krim and the experience. How many titles between Clay and Krim you've got to be pushing 50? Maybe more than 50, actually. Um, and Shotzi, you know, a world champion in, you know, elsewhere, is just such raw talent. He could, you know, in the next two, three years, be the best that it has ever been. You just don't know. Uh, I just think he's got such potential. It is out of this world. I, I'm getting a lot of funny tweets at the moment where, like, I'm saying, like, Shotzi's definitely one of the best players in the world. And a lot of people are like, well, he needs to do it on land. I'm like, well, he did, remember? Like, when they won the LA Home Series, he was the MVP as well. Like, he's right. disgusting. This is an incredible player. This is someone who has been absurd since the first time he came onto our radars here in the Call of Duty scene, and it was in Black Ops 4. I remember tweeting him. I was like, I'm looking forward to watching you do this sort of rancid-ish all year long. And as soon as he became 18, boom, here he is i just checked my anyway. tweets and uh someone told me frosty was 9 and 20 so i'm gonna roll with it uh well <laughs> it's even worse 9 and 20 anyway he, he, this he, he, 
but but how much he turned it around anyway. Uh, no, this we're going to have to leave our Twitter fingers elsewhere. We're back in yeah, the game, I believe, on, Miles. Mate. Back into the game we go. And again, this is a big, big map now for Dallas. They have a fantastic record on this one, Phil. Uh, do they? Interesting, they do, Miles. Mate, yes. uh, I should have checked that really before <laughs> we went into the game. But we're already <laughs> off and running here. Clayster and Pharaoh finding a couple of kills. And the Mutineers, they're a fast-paced search and destroy team, to say the least. Yeah, very, very fast. And again, good record for Dallas. See if they can't keep that one going. Hoop with the opening kill there. As Frosty also falls, shots he traded out as well. And a moment of silence now as both teams are going to have to sit back and just wait for the play towards eight. See that bomb down position though. That's the bad sign right now for Florida. They've really got to make a play across map. Gunfire's yeah. going to help seal the deal, but you have to make it happen. Pharaoh's so oh. sneaky. Oh, he was big brain plays. He checks both ways before he lets rip. That's so unfortunate. Awakening <laughs> now. Sorry, brother. <laughs> In a 2v3. I was going to say, as he opened that door, I think he tickled Crim6 backside there with it as he pushed him away from that door. But uh, you said about the numbers. You're absolutely right. 7-1 and one, uh, currently for the Dallas Empire here on Search and Destroy Gunrunner. Uh, a favoured map and mode combination. This is their first pick of uh, the series, of course, for, for Florida. It isn't the best. They are 3-5 and five on this one. They've lost it plenty of times. But they've, never, they've never actually matched up against Dallas on it. So... Uh, anything can happen. I know these numbers we like to throw at you for fun statistics, but um, you've got to really turn up on the day. Show what you're made of, and there's improvements going on week after week, and of course, tournament after tournament. But how unlucky was that? Coming through that door there, I thought he was just creaking it open, going to get a, a kill, and then shoot it again. Uh, he watched the first player, and he looked to the right, and then when he realized the shots were coming through, he was like, I need to cut my losses and try to get one here, but very trying to make it work. Super aggressive start here from Illy. He's way across. I mean, A, it's not even the A site anymore. That's not the goal. He's going to do the full wrap. Bomb's going to go down. Wait for him to take that high ground position. It doesn't need a shot. See, he's slip sliding around on the coals here. Play on the outside now, finding kills of his own. And wow, what a round from Dallas Empire. I mean, this is an open and shut case. Awakening's like, I think they might be back here. Yeah, they definitely are. Illy. What a round from the Dallas Empire. Getting vibes at the very start of CDL. This is when Dallas were just absolutely mobbing up here on uh, on search and destroying on all the online tourneys. And these guys have gone through ups and downs, and I will say uh, certainly have impressed me so much along the way. But right now, uh, I think they're at the best. That I think ridiculous. Dallas Empire are looking incredible, uh, and the Mutineers are not a team to overlook in search and destroy. And they made them look amateur, especially in that round. Yep, that was a very good round indeed. Two nothing so far. Empire with the lead. Florida's offensive take now as they try their hand with a B site for the time being. Havoc, nice opening kill. Illy with the immediate trade back. Awakening. Can't quite get it. Whoa, Illy. Great shots there. Service to air rounds, get it done. It's Frosty now. Difficult spot. It's a power position green. It gives you a lot of angles to work with there. But oh, ho, ho, ho. As if things weren't dangerous enough for Frosty right now. Here comes Shotzi. I missed a chance there. Here's Shatsy. Anyway, The Shining, great film. Skies with that snipe. <coughs> Basically not involved in this, in this entire round. Like, this has been a weird one. Pharaoh's going to try to cover him. Maybe bait out some action. See if he can't get a couple of picks there from Skies. The good news again for Florida is that Pharaoh has the bomb. Bomb has been retrieved. You see that edge in oh, wow. the A-site, actually. Snipe's going down. Skies will be revealing his location. That's a complete split. Oh, we didn't see Shotsy. Interesting. 2v3. Clay. Bomb's going to be going down nonetheless, though. So in this one versus three situation, Pharaoh now has given himself as much of an advantage as he possibly can. No dead silence. Ooh, one kill goes his way if he can catch any more, but no. Shotzi. Every single opportunity the young man gets, he takes it. I thought he'd got away through the vents then. I really did. I thought he was yeah. just going to sneak his way through. Doesn't manage to get into the tight space soon enough. And we're going to see a defuse and another round go in favor of the Dallas Empire. Shout out to our observers, just showing, of course, those field upgrades and the reason why they're, of course, waiting. Um, this is why. As soon as the defuse comes through, take a look at Shotzi's, for example, of course, when the objective... Oh, he's gone. Never mind. Uh, no, no, you're right. It's oh. the, the, the players are rebuilding their field upgrades. So I, I wanted to show it, but it, it got taken away. It's okay. Well, you had your chance. There's a difference between you and Shotzi. When he gets a chance, he takes it. Wow. Okay. Rub it in. I see. Another great Free round. Out. Dallas Empire. <laughs> Another great round from Moving Dallas. <laughs> Another great round from Dallas. Florida are being stunned 
so far in the search and destroy. Good map for the Dallas Empire and for good reason. Look at that confidence. I mean, they know Frosty's potentially there. They don't care. Shots are there. However, Awakening's first blood might change things somewhat. Clay moving forward. Again, not able to quite take care of Frosty. Illy may be able to back him up as he's really dealing with a lot of trouble there in the depot. In from behind, he comes. Awakening caught napping. As Illy may be able to find a couple more kills here. There's the Dead Silence play coming through from Havoc as well. Alright, take the back. He does get his Dead Silence, but not active. Frosty and Farron are trying to maneuver around the map. Find something. Clayster from above finds one. Lovely shots. Not able to get the kill again. Clay and, and Frosty just can't quite seal the deal against each other in this three versus two now. Clay's done a great job in just getting away there. Utilize well. the stun. He is going to go down eventually, but the time was ticking. What Clay's done there is just buy his teammates a couple of seconds on the clock. Shotzi and Huke, of course, gifted with that time. Look at the time ticking. Ain't going to happen. No Ain't diffuse happen. in sight. Shotzi just searching for <laughs> the kill. Frosty out and about with his knife. Frosty with a knife, by the way. Let's talk about that for a second. What is it with this kid and the knife? Ah, uh, he's got some incredible clips, but that's another round to Dallas Empire. I mean, whether it's knife kills or what, it's just very, very difficult to do anything against the setups they've got here. We haven't seen any love towards B. It's been A hits. I mean, no one seems to have any kind of, like, retake strategies that are effective enough against Dallas. They don't, don't seem to know what to do with them against the, the opening pushes. Dallas Empire. Really making a mockery of the Florida Mutineers search and destroy game here on Gunrunner. 4 nothing. And again, testament to the record, 7-1 and one for Dallas Empire. The only team that they've actually lost this map most to is uh, the London Royal Ravens. These guys have been dominant across the board. And it's interesting to see how it pans out. However, first and second blood this time it goes to the Mutineers. And this is a round really that we wanted to close out. Pharaoh does find Clayster on the flank. Billy and Crimson blast alive, and they are going to get shut down. A very quick round here for the Mutineers to bite back. Yeah, very individually uh, won there, basically. Everyone got their 1v1s. Awakening took care of shots. He was 1v1 by top water ramp. Pharaoh managed to pick up his snipe on Clay at the back of the base. Or oh, the back of the base? The back of minecarts, excuse me. Like it's, it's just, they were individual plays that really made Florida work out there. Everyone got their kills, so to speak. Dallas, though, happy to give these kind of rounds up. They've got plenty to work with. A soft, soft cushion of four rounds so far. There we go. Another round now with Dallas on the offensive. Looks like they're going away. They're going to keep trying it. Keep going to A. We go. This, we call this the avalanche in rock, paper, scissors, where it's just three rocks in a row. You just keep doing it. Because they're going to guess wrong eventually, and you're going to get the advantage. Anyone new strategy in rock, paper, scissors, it would be Miles the Ross. You're so welcome. You heard it here first. <laughs> welcome to the avalanche. 4v4 here. As skies is going to fall. Crim6 around the train tracks as Shotzi helps him out. Oh my will fall. God. Awakening. Get out of here. Shotzi finds the second. Pharaoh, you're on Shotzi's list. However, someone, I believe uh, Clay might have taken him from that top step position. A very quick round here. It was Clay. Tap, tap. Right out of that air conditioning unit. See you later. Tap, tap. Match point. Give us one more round for Dallas Empire and we say hello to the domination. I mean, like, yeah, crazy. The veto process, though, man. So those coaches trying to give their boys the advantage they can before they even get into the game. Three-man push there from the Mutineers and towards B, trying to find a couple of kills. A few picks would be very, very helpful. And again, the Mutineers, they were pushing the bomb towards A for a brief moment, and now that hesitation seems to have kicked in. They're rethinking the play here. Zoinks. Slide out for Havoc. Is it going to work out for them? And it'll be the last 60 seconds of this s &D. Miles, it has gone so, so fast. Frosty and Illy are going to trade things out. Awakening still over by the rock. The M4 in hand. And going to tickle Crim6 a little bit. Crim's definitely not ticklish, though. He backed up. Doesn't seem to mind. Pharaoh trying to find something Illy with perfect timing across the doorway there. There he is. Sun's going to go through. No tags whatsoever. And... Trying to bait out something there. You saw the play. Shotzi almost managed to get all three of them. It comes down to Skies. This is for the search and destroy, my friend. One versus two. Can he keep his team in it? Oh, no. Here they come. You talked about mobbing up. They've grubbed up. They're mobbed up. And that's it. <laughs> They're fed up. Good night, Florida. 6-1. We're going straight to the domination after a phenomenally dominant performance there. It's Dallas just spanked them. There is a massive red hand across the backside of the mutineers right now. Oh boy, that was 
That very was convincing. something, bro. <laughs> very, very convincing. That's why the seven and one. That is why they're now eight and one. Gunrunner search and destroy. If you can avoid it, the smile on Clayster's face. Very different from, than yesterday. I think you'll re remember he was kind of very frustrated Insta at the man. end of the game. And he was just kind of talking to his team, clearly communicating. This time, it's all smiles after that S&D. However, it's all tied up now one to one. Uh, we are going to stay on Gunrunner for the domination. We've got some Ramazza, of course, going to be sprinkled in there with Hardpoint. Are we going to see another game five? We've seen seven out of what technically is 12 being this one. We get a game five here. Two thirds of the games that will have been played at the Minnesota home series will be game fives. Wild. We knew this was going to be a special event, Phil. We knew this right. was going to be a crazy one. <laughs> Highest competition we've ever seen in the Call of Duty League. Changes to servers, you name it. Changes to rosters for the Florida Mutineers. Again, awakening coming in to replace Morks. We hope he's enjoying the show. Obviously cheering on his teammates, but wow, man. What a, uh, I mean, changes. We're going through changes here in the COD League, and it changes to the power rankings, it changes to the standings. The Dallas Empire as well. Not looking to change too much up. Obviously coming into this event as winners in the previous home series. The last home series we saw them in. Looking to go back to back would be very exciting indeed. All tied up. One to one in this semi-final. We are looking to find another win here in the domination for one of these teams. We're going to be seeing that Ramaza hard point at the minimum. The semi-final was not disappointed, friends. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, more Call of Duty League action. Call of Duty League is brought to you by Metro by T-Mobile. Stay connected to what matters most with the best value in wireless. Someone roasted me on Twitter. Yo, you're the most deaths in the CDL. I'm just like, I throw <laughs> trophies to block smokes. What do you do? <laughs> How's it going, everybody? My name is Tyler Polchow, a.k.a. TP, and this episode is number four of The Barracks, presented by Metro by T-Mobile, the number one brand in prepaid. Today, we're going one-on-one -on -one with Crim6 from the Dallas Empire. The most winning player in Call of Duty history has had success on multiple Dynasty lineups in Call of Duty. But it is the need for Frosty to finally shut it down. Crim with three in a row. I have a lot of history with this guy. I've won tournaments with this guy. I was the coach of this guy. Today, we're diving into his head, trying to break down why he is the most successful player in Call of Duty thus far. 
Porter, we have a surprise guest for you to talk to, buddy. Are you ready? Uh-oh. It's Rambo Ray! <laughs> <laughs> What's one thing Prim could improve upon as a player or whatever? What am I picking? This is my time. Give okay. me something, Ray Bay Bay. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's get into it. Well, there's a sneak peek at the latest episode of The Barracks, presented by Metro by T-Mobile. In this episode, they talk to Crim6 about his rise from paying his parents' rent and working part-time jobs to 34 championships. It's going to be very, very interesting. Again, he's been dominating the COD Pro scene for so, so long and sitting atop that throne of COD's highest winning player for a very long time. Phil, again, there's lots to talk about that one. I mean, Crim's got a real history, man. Like a very, like, ridiculous history when you think about it. Been around for... As long as I can think, to be completely frank, brother. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, most definitely, as Chris has been uh, around for a while, I'm not sure how long you can think, Miles. I, I, uh, I mean, I my, my card history is very limited. It's like 12 months, mate. I'm new here, mate. <laughs> uh, but you're absolutely right, Crim. That guy, I think is, I think he goes by Crim6, the longer name. He, he does, um, he does. One, he does. one of those good guys, you know? Been around anyway, for a let's, while. Let's talk about his teammates now in this US Army tactical play. Uh, this was the redonkulous round from the Dallas Empire. We're talking about a bomb arm within seconds. We're talking about yep. an incredible overwhelming of the defenses here of the Florida Mutineers. They didn't see any of this coming. This was truly a round to behold from the Empire. It, it really was, and there was a couple of moments that stood out for me. Shotzi, actually, uh, when he was around uh, the boiler room, he was very much, he was so fluid in the way he was coming in and out of there, but he, he came out, um, picked up a kill with the MP5, so it's long range and the sense it's like over by the rock, then goes straight back in, pre-firing, and it's just the awareness that that kid has is, is kind of incredible, but it's okay to have that, but clearly he's getting fed that communication as well. That's something we really don't get a grasp of unless we're in a, a listening um, but so, so well uh, from the Dallas Empire. That was one of the most convincing wins. Doesn't ma map or mode. Doesn't matter what map or mode. Tongue twister for you. Um, Too many M's. Merc we've seen in a while. Memo. Merc. Anyway. No, Too, many M's, Too many M's, Too many M's. Anyway, we're ready to get into the game, brother. And for your flappy gums, my friend, it's time okay. to give Alrighty. us the domination. I'm sorry, that was too mean. We'll talk about it afterwards. But here we go. Staying on Gunrunner. <laughs> we're still here. <laughs> we love Gunrunner, Miles. Let's get into it. <laughs> Domo is upon us. Havoc is upon the A flag as well. Pharaoh's backing him up as well, so I hope you love that A flag, Dallas, because you need to do something about it. It's almost gone. Havoc takes care of C6. Frosty now over towards that C flag as these players have swapped sides. No, I take it all back. They're still, they're, yeah, kind of. I'm confused. Look at the spawns on the right hand side of the map, two and four. It's going to be Skies and Pharaoh about to come in from behind on that C flag. Oh no, they're going to win the fights here in Krim. He's actually winning the fights, keeping his players safe out of A. So, weird start to the game, not going to lie. Honestly, very weird, and uh, I like your uh, summarize of who are... Oh, I'm confused. Um, I, I was right there with you. The the flags were changing hands so fast. Uh, a and B has now settled in the hands of Dallas. Mutineers are going to take over C. Look at number one, though. That's going to be Awakening, just lingering around that home flag for Dallas. But he's actually going to try and get a couple of kills, and he's going to find place drop screen. Illy, though, in front of your eyes, he's going to find himself a wild mutineer. And now, number three, jumping on, is going to be Frosty. He's going to be pinched from all angles, though. Not a chance to capture that one. He has got the neutralization, though, here. 10 to 20, the scoreline. 10 to 20, the scoreline with Dallas in a solid position to keep the scoreline working out. All they need to do is hold. Well, let's hear from themselves and see if they can do it. It's time for an Astro Gaming listen in for the Dallas Empire. Oh, 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 oh. Top bathroom, dead. Water, Brad. Hop it again. Nice. Yeah, hop it, hop it, hop it. I have a map a little bit. 
Yo, yo, I can't watch yo, your way right now. Green train, green train. I'll, I'll pick up one second. Dead. He's going under. Yo, fight, 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 fight. Yeah, went white, white, white. And now the Empire starts to really sit in, Phil. They're looking confident. The comms are great. And the scoreline is only going to be more and more comfortable for them. So they've got to win a big fight here on B. They have just lost it. Awakening is trying to be annoying here towards the A flag. And annoying is exactly what he's doing. Yeah, Awakening was very successful in being annoying, if that's the case there. He does on march on through. B is in the hands of the Mutineers. However, you see Pharaoh defending C. Now pushing through those cargo containers. He's going to be uh, closely monitored by Illy as he does get his way through. And now with Illy being a nuisance here, he's got through C. He hasn't touched the flag, but all the teammates, of course, of the mutineers hunting him down, do find him. But in the meantime, over by B, this is a bit of a distraction play here as the Dallas Empire hidden both B and C at the same time. Been successful with one of those and they've reclaimed that flag. Now with a 12-point lead, a minute 20 on the clock, they have the advantage, the lead. They have everything going for them. They really do, mate. Minute 14 left, as you said. And now they're starting to just walk this one all the way to the bank. Still, Florida not out of this yet. Gunrun is not the uh, smallest map in the game. Not the easiest to run across and make these decisive plays. It ain't no hack in the yard, that's for sure. You really have to meet it when you go for these flag places. It has to be very decisive plays. And again, the spawns are essential to be fully aware of where the enemy is coming from so you can prep yourselves for those attacks. See, flag goes back into the hands. Of the mutineers for now, as we're still tussling over B. No one quite able to get the job done just yet, but the kill's coming through there for the Empire now. Going for the fast secure, two members on top of it. Illy going in for a bit of annoyance at C, and that's what you have to keep an eye on. You've got to keep that fight alive at B constantly, while making sure that your home flag is safe. Final 30 seconds now, as these teams are trying to just garner as many points as possible in these dying seconds, and so far so good. Dallas Empire with a wonderful start here in the first half. I love what shots he was doing there over by C as well. He was just kind of jumping on and off C, just frustrating the mutineers. And he didn't actually get the neutralization. He kept them towards and focused on him, though, and be uncontested for now. Last couple of seconds are going to tick by. They're going to go in favor of Dallas. We're going to end up with a pretty convincing first half score line. Of course, Dallas Empire coming out on top here. It is one to one if you just joined us. Of course, the hard point went in favor of mutineers. Dallas struck back with the search and destroyer. Convinced one of that. And now here in domination. After five minutes, we see Empire up. Uh, how much by? Let's have a look. We'll see as soon as... There we go. 87 to 59. <laughs> 28. Quick maths. Here we go. Second half starting now. This is to take the lead in the series for Dallas. But again, not out of the woods is Florida. They can make themselves... Very much known here in the second half. Get back into this one. Keep on your screen. He's going to be the first member of the Empire in on towards B. Take it all back. He's deviated towards pipes. But the C flag now in the hands of the Empire. Here comes Illy. Right through the side door. Flex to get one kill just before finding him's early demise. Clay now trying to provide that coverage in towards B. Great spot to be attacking this flag from. Beautiful shots once again from Clayster. Skies finds his fifth there in a row. Trying to make that B flag that little bit safer now. The Mutineers with a chance to grab it. Yeah, Crim6 has completely ignored B, and he's going to opt to just try and flip spawns here. Look at this. Number 7 is Crim6. He might have to edge his way towards A and maybe find himself a kill. Oh, it's going to be Skies he's going to run into if he does do that, but the neutralization is going to go down. He was under attack for a second, but it's going to be uh, retained by Dallas. Crim6 off screen does manage to neutralize C uh, Sorry, A. It's going to be in nobody's hands here as Pharaoh is going to hurry back. Make sure no one is pushing it. Because again, a one-on-one uh, -on -one flag is not too bad for the Dallas Empire. But right now, only one flag is captured. And that's the middle. That's B. It's going to be Florida's. Now they're going to be grabbing A quite quickly. Awakening's going to try to keep C a little secure. Bad timing. That's unfortunate. Illy's going to be able to secure it. Teammates off spawn. Going to finish the job. Brilliant stuff from Illy. Good timing. Takes care of Awakening, takes care of Frosty. Now trying to push through mid, trying to apply that pressure to B. Having on this back, and it's just volley after volley from these two teams taking shots at each other, trying to make that mid map theirs. Shotsy though. Dead. Trying to make some <laughs> towards A. And like the effort, again, it's difficult. You want to be trying to hit those players on the, to the home, enemy home flag. That's the goal there, is to just disrupt and disperse the enemy so that your teammates can either win their fights there on B flag. It's very difficult to get done. Prop it's been a good. Yeah. Yeah, and this has been a really good hold here for the Mutineers. They've managed to retain B. They've recaptured their home flag. The pressure has been, you know, dwindled a little bit. And Dallas, they were all over B. 
And it looks like that's what they're going back for here with the smoke. All jumping on it. He's going to be taken out of the game here for a second. It's going to be Krim just at the back. This guy is going to deal with him. Oh, my God. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> no, he ain't. <laughs> no, he ain't. Shots, he's here. Oh, man. And that was looking great for a while. Florida's still 10 points separating this team. Oh, man. They're going to make a clean play. But you got to watch out for Clayster in the PIP. Oh, he won his fight. He's going to be on the A flag now. It's all working out for Dallas. <laughs> oh, and Illy's winning the fights on B as well. I mean, this is the makings of a potential trip cap. Well, I mean, all Clay had to do was jump onto A, make it neutral. He got a little bit of the capture point up. And look at that. Now it's over a 15-point game difference. You love to see it. Oh, it's getting there. Sorry. Well, you love to see it if you're a Dallas fan. That's for sure. A two cap, two minutes, and a 20-point lead pretty much here. And again, all the momentum swinging your way. Illy, four kill streak, 24 and 17. Absolutely running the lobby in the slaying side of things. Awakening, you can be number 25, my friend. <laughs> Looking a little bit over now for a lot of fans, I believe. The mutant is chalk this one up, roll straight into the hard point. It's going to be a Ramaza hard point. And of course, Ramaza search and destroy for game five as well. 25 for Illy to his name. Five in a row. Five flag grabs as well. And again, massive amount of flag interactions for both teams. Oh, Shotzi. I mean, not only is he so fast and nimble, but he seems to be able to dodge bullets as well. Neil Unbelievable himself. stuff, man. Oh, boy. Crim's now it's going on a tear. That's how you know things are good. You know the AC's all fine and working for Crim 6 right now. No sweaty palms, no nothing. As the Empire continue to run amok here on the Mutineers. At least having an absolute blast right now. He's just running around <laughs> trying to slay everything he can. He's on a nine kill streak. I know the observers will want to jump back on board with him. He's not near anyone just yet, but as he makes his way through boiler room, here he is. Can he get number 10 in a row? Illy. Yes, he can. 30 and 17 for Illy for Dallas Empire. 40 seconds left. A 28 point lead at this point. You need a trip cap. And I tell you what, Mewineers, you're not even close. You've not got a two cap. You ain't got a three cap. You're barely holding on to your own flag as the pressure. The Empire starts to just push and pressure you back more and more. B is actually changing hands, but with the time at what it is right now, Dallas cemented the victory here, going into the hard point, of course. Uh, they're going to be having a, a ball of a time, but they lost the first one, Miles. They're going to have to head over to Ramaza, I believe, obviously, uh, and take the victory there. Or are we going to see our eight game five of the tournament uh, to summarize this domination, though, Dallas, one step ahead. I think we both know where this series is going, mate. <laughs> yeah, I truly five. believe yeah, that. Okay, fine. <laughs> fine. I really <laughs> think that's the case. But Dallas, the Empire restores order over these rebellious mutineers, and they take the lead in the series. Still, mate, one more is all Dallas need now, and they can call it comfort in the home series finals, where they will be playing Atlanta Phase. Stats on your screen now. And again, it was uh, it, was, it was a bit of a tornado at times there for the Dallas Empire to just smash their way through this one. Illy, 33 and 19. I mean, that is a fantastic performance. Seven flag interactions as well. So got to hand it to the boys there of the Empire. That was a strong, strong showing on a map that they do love very dearly. Again, brilliant job from the Mutineers to take that first map because this could be a 3-0 oh, now. Imagine that, mate. That'd be unbelievable. Not like what we've seen thus far in the Minnesota home series. So now we're on to a Ramaza hard point. I would love to know, Phil, what do yes. you think? Uh, I mean, game I mean, five. Game five, hard, obviously. But. Hard point Ramaza. But Dallas, the three and three on this uh, for Florida four and four. So again, it's very kind of even playing field, much like uh, some of the previous ones. However, the biggest surprise for me was actually hard point gun runner. When I saw that in the, in the rotation, I actually thought Dallas would be able to take that pretty convincingly. A Mutineers came out and shocked me. Um... If someone mm. said to me he would be going to a game five with the Mutineers actually winning both hard points, I would have been a little bit, bit, little, little bit worried, a little bit, uh, yeah, surprised, should I say, if that would be the case. And I don't know. I can kind of see it happening in a weird way. I think their hard point looks super strong in map number one. We've seen crazier things. It seems like the tournament for all the game fives to come through. And it was funny, in my predictions, I actually put down a lot of kind of blowouts. You know, I, I thought going Same. into this, there'd be a lot of 3-0s, um, not many game fives, and that's through the whole tournament. I couldn't have been further wrong. My predictions this weekend have been the worst predictions I've ever made. Uh, and I kind of really enjoy it. I really love being wrong. It's, it's fascinating. And I'll tell you what, I never thought I'd see 
uh, the teams pushing through and what we've seen this weekend. It's been incredible. But no, they are already in the mate. final. Mutineers trying there, to get there. Oh, Mutineers, the Empire, they've got to do what they can to get there. But I, I would just say, if you go to calljutelease.com, if you go to the bracket builder there uh, on the website, you can put in any of the Twitter handles of anyone you want to see. Uh, what they predicted, you know, is their brackets. And you can see just how horrifically wrong I was. I think I've got five points, Phil. Five points out of a possible, I'm not sure what the overall possible is, but I you know am the getting, website, Miles, off the top of your head. Off the top of my head, I just bring it up once I've got my computer in front of me, you know, because we're all working at home these days. Hold up a minute. Bracket or call duty league.com, is it? That is call duty league.com. Oops, excuse me. Bracket, I think. No, oh, no, no, it's Minnesota. Oh, mate, I'm choking it. I'm choking it. it. Cut to a commercial. It, uh, uh, just cut, Miles, just cut to a Miles, break. I was cut. really trying to help you. Bracket or call of duty league.com, is it? It is. It's bracket or call of duty league.com. You click on leaderboard. And then you can go bracket look up and put in anyone's Twitter username. And now that I'm on blast, it's too late. Let's just get into the game. I Yo, screamed I got... <laughs> for a commercial break. I didn't receive it, but instead I've been gifted Philip with the game. Thanks for I got nine been... points, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely <laughs> Woo! I don't know what is going wrong, but it's, it's I am a... getting toasted. I got four points. Anyway, get into the game. <laughs> Jesus, get me into this game. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. That is funny. S slow and steady start. To a Ramaza hard point. Twenty-one points. Oh, don't stop. Enough. We're moving on. We're moving okay. on. Okay. All right. It's, a it's normally a slow and steady start here on Ramaza. Again, this bridge hard point, the first one, is difficult to get to, difficult to hold. But if you're huge, not a problem, man. He shot through the floor there, and this is just the view, I believe, from some form of innocent bystander here who lives in Ramaza, who frequents the electronics and gun shop on the weekends and. Maybe even works in the construction site. Who knows? That's a bit of lore there that we'll never quite find out about. But what we will find out about is how disgusting, and I mean disgusting, Florida have started this game off. Yeah, so far, so good. Every single point that has been available has gone straight to Muniz's top pocket. And here we are, 40 to Ooh. zero. And they're going to be rotating over. It's not looking good for Dallas's. Our point number two, Skies. Oh, so elegantly takes yep. that ladder down. It's crazy. Uh, you got to be careful there. He's 5 uh, and 0. He didn't want to take an L. Yeah, it's crazy to think the most dangerous thing Skies come across so far is simply gravity at this point in time. He was more worried about falling over there than he was being shot by any of the members of the Empire. Still, Florida Mutineers with a stunning start to this hard point. Let's have an Astro Gaming listen in with the Florida Mutineers. Oh, oh, I'm 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 I think I'm gonna hop the wall. I'm not the wall. Right, they're you guys stay like now. They're holding the now. Yo, one's one's bottom rug and one's top rug. One shot, one shot in ammo. Absolutely. Yeah, stay alive, Behind the heady and ammo. They're playing golf. I'm going top yeah, rug. Rug, One shot rug, then. One shot rug. And then you over rug. I'm in the front, front, then. I got made a bad. Yeah, you're on. Yo, play top rug. Play top rug, guys. Yo, listen. BS and D, guys. BS and D. Let's push up front. I'm going around left. Let's push up front together. I'm nearing top mid. I'm coming from with you. Top 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 I'm going to top rug. Top rug. I can't jump over the wall. Please, one shot top rug. One bullet. Yo, shot team ammo. Shot team ammo. Mm -hmm. He's pushing out. He's pushed up for sure. Top. Watch your Tyler. One shot. I have one. I have one. I have one. I have one. Bottom mid. Back alley. Back alley. Dead. Watch bottom mid. Watch bottom mid. I'm getting rugs. I'm getting rugs. Bottom mid. I'm getting rugs. I'm getting rugs. Turn the back. Well, well, well. The Florida mutiny is certainly making a mess of the Dallas Empire here on Ramaza. The rebellion continues, awakening now heavy pressure on the point. No bullets, no problem. Two kills to his name. His teammates are going to get the rest. Oh, it's just, it's so nasty right now. The mutineers are rancid. The funny thing about this is number two on the minimap. See how they're just hovering? I see how they are just hovering. It's guys. He hasn't died yet. He didn't want to go anywhere near this half yet. point. He's 8-0. Well, he's 10-0. He's just chilling. Yeah, well, he was in an 8 and 0, okay? And now he's 10 and 0, but he's been chilling. He's like, nah, -ah, the barbershop ain't for me. Don't need a haircut. Don't care about quarantine. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to chill. I'm going to make it 11 and 0. He's trying. He's trying. He's tagged up three players with one clip there. 11, oh 12, 13 for Skies. Oh my, what is this kid had for breakfast? There are new challenges and finally goes down. <laughs> it was closer at the end who ends the spree, but wow. Lovely run there. Wonderful start from the Mutineers. However, not over yet. 
It's far from over. Construction site, hard point, 30 seconds remaining here. And Empire have done a brilliant job of getting themselves back into the mix here. Big kills, lovely mid-map control. The rotation's now underway. It's gonna be four members of the Empire make, oh sorry, four members now, five, of the Mutineers making their way in straight under the site. Illy trying to find something from behind. Big tags, Nate's are there. He's got everything to throw at them to slow this one down. Big kills once again, and Illy, ooh, my, so destructive. But this has been great work from the Empire to get themselves back into this one. Mutineers, that strong, strong start has just started to slow down. Yeah, and again, just the slain side, you can, you can see. Look at the numbers. I don't need to call names out. Certain people obviously having slow starts, but really Dallas Empire is hold a little bit behind. They just weren't able to pick up those kills. Skies is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we said he was 13 and 0, I think he was. Now he's 14 yep. and 5. So again, Ooh. it looks like things are turning around. I think he's run into a brick wall a couple of times. Uh, Brick Wall being the Dallas Empire here. They were down by 100 and they are closing that gap. But 155 to 73, a convincing lead right now. The Mutant is trying to push it to a game five. Oh, these are great shots from Skies again. Solid bit of work now from the Mutineers to hold this line forward. The so can't get it all done on his own. Crim 6 now coming for reinforcements. The shots through the back of the head of Crim from Shotzi. Getting the final seconds here on the hard point. Rotations, however, underway. Placer doing what he can to play spoiler here. But he has a lot of mutineers in front of him to deal with. And all the swashbuckling in the world won't help him without the help of his teammates. So here we go. 7 to 16 for Clay for him. Trying to get himself back into this one. Power position of Sky is absolutely eviscerated there. Here comes the attack. Frosty on point. He's going to take the two of them. Can't quite get the third as Illy will be there. Awakening through the floorboards. We love to see it. There's a level of awareness right now, Phil, that we're noticing from the Florida Mutineers. You touched upon it during the listening. Skies is using FMJ and the Mutineers know a lot of spots where you can shoot through stuff on this map. Yeah, it just seems like for me, Skies is trying to just be a little bit different and play a game which is you know, not necessarily one step ahead, but one step maybe to the side of most teams. It's just different, puts a different aspect on the game, and I tell you what, it's working. However, the Dallas Empire, they've changed gear, they're stepping things up, they were 100 points down, Miles, and I, I tell you what, it is closing very, very fast, less than 30 points between the two teams. Now, the comeback is on, and Skies has gone from 13-0 and 0 to 19-9, and 9. make it 20 as he starts to heat up once more on a two-kill streak here. Trope system down, covering for his squad. The catwalk is done dusted. We're over to the shop here. And it is this time going to be Dallas's to keep. Dallas on the early rotation. Huke. Sneaky. Oh, almost too sneaky. Oh, he falls. No. no. Wow. I thought we managed to get two there. I, I apologize, headphone users. Illy, great bit of work there coming through on the callouts. Clayson now holding those back barrels by the white van. Again, slightly unorthodox position. You expect to look at the white barrels. Don't look. Don't you expect to look at the white van, but he's actually at the barrel. So. Empire pulling out all the stops here, trying to pull the comeback off, and Illy doing what he can from the smoke. Solid bit of work there again from the Mutineers on the break. They get right on in. Crim's going to have to back on up now. 30 seconds remaining. Good chunk to be had here from the Mutineers. However, map control and rotation will definitely be going to the Empire unless something crazy happens, and Frosty's trying to make it happen there. He's actually made the run through mid. He's going to find one. Farrah trying to back him up now. Frosty finds a second before going down, so almost made it work there alone. That's a lot of scrap time to pick up as well. That's 25 seconds gifted to the Mutineers. And yes, the Barbershop might be favoring the Dallas Empire, but this lead is growing over 200. And that is a scary time here for Dallas. This is looking potentially like a game five unless Dallas can change it here. Clayster on your screen and four in hand. Crim six down low with the MP5. He's got to try and do something different, but over back by the Barbershop. It's going to be Pharaoh pushing him potentially from behind. He's going to be uh, welcomed by the whole of the Dallas Empire back there, it seems like there. As the kill feed does go white and gold, it seems, as the Dallas Empire retain the hard point for now. And look at number zero and seven. That is going to be Duke and Crim6 already thinking about that rotation. Yeah, looking for the lead, looking for the win. Not just the win here, but a spot in the home series finals. He's going to do what he can to just push these players back. 25 seconds is plenty of time. Again, the spawns right now for the Mutineers are still sitting. Oh, no. The spawns are flipped. Look at number four. Pharaoh and Skies. The spawns fairy has arrived and gifted these boys a couple of pennies. That's massive. Crim's got no idea where they are. Now Dallas Empire are going to be scratching their heads. Where are the Mutineers? What have they done? They spawned in the next hard point. you love to see it. It's great for Mutineers. By all <laughs> means, great. that 100-point lead is not... Not uh, not the lead they once had. However, you see number four go down. That's going to be Pharaoh and pushing through. They're going to be up top. It's Clay's The trophy system is down. So is he. Skies eliminates him with the M4. A trophy system goes down again. Covering all bases. 25 points is all they need. Contest coming in, but the Mutineers are holding strong. Hard point seems to be the game of their choice right now. Huge denied. And I tell you what, Miles, this is looking good. 
This is looking very good. The Mutineers got game five written all over it. Ten now for the win. Pharaoh wants it. He's going pretty solid in this hard point alone. Doesn't have a lot of work though from his teammates. Nice shots. Can't quite clean up Clay. The pistol's out and he's going to find another. There's the tags and here's the final seconds and we are going to a game five. <laughs> it's not even a joke anymore. It's game fives all tournament long. Yep, what event this is has what been? We've brought. This is our last one we're casting, Miles, and everyone from day one, game two it was, I think. It's just game fives after game fives after game fives. I can safely say, in, uh, in my history of casting, I've never cast the whole tournament of only game fives. And let it be known, I love it. Wow. Ramaza Hardpoint Hard was uh, <laughs> was pretty open and shut. Let's be, let's be honest. 197, that's a big win. It, it was a big win. There was a period of time where Dallas did get back into it. There was a 20, 30 point lead maximum at one point. The Mutineers had an incredible start and, and Dallas actually, for maybe a large majority of that, were actually in a very good position. Maybe, quote unquote, the better team, but it was such an impactful star. It was too much for them to come back from. Again, you, you put the scoreline to maybe 500 and double that, lengthen that, you never know what happens, but it ain't that way. It's first to 250, and when a team goes up by, like, 130 to 30, it's very hard to come back from. It's very hard. Not impossible, but very, very hard to come back from. Well, 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 boys and girls, we're going to a game five. Who'd and have thought? This one, yeah, who'd have thought it? This one could be very interesting. Again, Ramaza, this is going to be it, boys and boys and girls. This is it for, the, uh, for a spot in the home series finals. This is going to be a huge game five. Both these teams absolutely gunning for that spot there in the grand finals. When we return after the break... The very exciting conclusion to this series. Tweet the stream, tell your friends. See you in a minute. Thousands and thousands of hours of hard work lead to this moment. The Mutineers will go in with a small lead. The Mutineers will have the advantage. Now they're on your point. Look how close it is, Joe. A millimeter. What a round. This is our crazy event. One of the most stacked groups we've had throughout the entire season. Atlanta fans, your Florida champions. Salium, a huge clutch. Dallas Empire, second home series win. Not one, not two, but three. Clays are going huge for Dallas Empire. There it is, Octane doing what Octane does. Rocco. 
clutch up once again. The Rocker are lighting it up. Huntsman, show who's on top. Christine, stop it. They will be your Seattle Home Series champions. Florida, close it out. Barrow, he finds another one. Ultra have done it. First time getting out of group. The kill feed all purple. An absolute rampage from Decimate right now. Real fast. He fights two. No. That's ridiculous. Game five. It is now time to decide who meets FaZe in the home series finals here at the Minnesota Rocker home series. Oh, good golly, Miss Molly. We could not be more excited to get into this one. And I truly mean it when I say this has been one of, if not the most exciting CDL event we have had so far. What is it about Minnesota? What is it about that place, man? What did Gary V say? Say it, Phil. You know what he said. Say it, Phil. No, what did he say about Minnesota? He, he said, we are... What did he say, Phil? Say it, go on. Phil, Phil. Phil, Phil, don't leave me hanging, say it. Phil, you're actually muted as you feel, so I'm gonna just pretend. Oh, I, mu I muted myself, I'm sorry, <laughs> Miles, I'm sorry. What did he say? I have no idea what he said. Oh, it I, doesn't I apologize, matter. apologize, Miles. It doesn't matter, I we're ready exactly to roll. I know exactly what he says, it, trying to bait me into that. I was trying I to bait you into that. <laughs> I was trying to bait you into that, my friend, but we're ready to get into this game now. This is it, game five, to decide a spot in the home series finals. Time to get very, very busy for these players. Bombs in the hands now of Ferris. He's going to make his way across towards that B site. He's got boys to back him up, and ooh, it's a bad name to start things off. Not a bad open, we hope, from Skies, but two members there of Dallas on the defense here at B. One towards A, and two of them hiding in towards middle. So they're going to be watching that push through Bottom Cafe, trying to find those side doors. That side door is crucial, and oh boy, Havoc may just be able to find something here if he's not careful. Opens that one with a toe. Stuns in. Going to land it. There's the nade, the shots, he gets away with his life. No backup there on the ground, so he has to win this fight alone. Oh, no, I see. He does a backup, he just killed him. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'll oh. tell you what, this is uh, an interesting round, Miles. That nade, I was going to say, you don't want to be doing uh, an aqua. And then I've just seen Havoc take down Frosty. Oh, what is going on? Well, this seen this start of this search and destroy round is not exactly as expected. 35 <laughs> seconds left. Each player still alive, make it seven as Awakening will go down. Place the in about and still alive to thanking Crim6 for that one. Oh, wait, Havoc in from behind, managing to open up that power position above the bomb site. Pharaoh got to find something, but Clay can't get it done. Clay's the. A little bit of help from his friends as the shots come through. All falls down to Havoc and Clayster once again. Clayster behind that truck there on the B site. Time and time again, we saw him do exactly the same thing against Atlanta FaZe on day one of the tournament. It is a great position to be in. You know he's going to be there. And he's got multiple spots in that one position where he will set himself up, find kills. His teammates are covering him the whole time. Very, very difficult to break the B site without proper utility usage. An interesting round number one to kick off things here in game number five. However, a long way to go. Three for Clayster. A strong start for Dallas Empire. Again, trying to get themselves in that final. Nice nade from Chelsea. Start this one off. In on B we go. And again, this is very, very different. That's proper utility usage. Make the site very safe. Clay wins the fight by his own box from the other side of the round. Barrow with a big kill there, though. Trying to keep his boys in this one. Bomb's going to be going down in and amongst all that gunfire. And Ferro once again finds his second of the round. Not to let that bomb going down to alarm him in any way. But those doors shut tells him that those players are right outside it. Here comes the reinforcements in from behind though. Shots is absolutely fearless. Great job from Ferro. I mean, this has been an, uh, a sensational round from him. And that could well be it. Hook's the last player left alive. 20 seconds on the bomb. Going to go for the quick defuse. Hook's got a lot of work to do here to try to catch that player. And it's done. I mean, it is. What a round. What a round, I will say. Very good. I mean, Clay hits five in a row, gets taken out, and it all starts to crumble there for the Empire. But uh, very well done from the Mutineers and putting a round on the board. A much needed one at that. We saw, of course, the previous search and destroy and how that went, Miles. I'm sure the Mutineers would not want a replay, of course, of that gun runner. That was <laughs> no. absolutely disgusting. <laughs> and straight away, I think we're having a bit of a different s &D so far. It's a lot more competitive, and that's really all we want. 1-1. One, one. Mutineers now on the offensive. 
See if they're going to be quite as boisterous as Dallas were, man. I mean, they were so aggressive. Nice job, Skies. Gets it done that time. There we go. Results, a tag, and Clay dies in the clay spot. This is a superb start for the Florida Mutineers. Frosty kills oh. them with a knife, mate. And then Havoc killed... Frosty's died twice now on offensive rounds <laughs> to Havoc. Dude, get a grip. Oh, uh, I want to see it from Havoc's POV. I know we saw some behind the scenes stuff for the Warzone weekend. It was honestly one of my favorite bits towards the end of it, but I'd love to hear the uh, the communication from Havoc every time he kills his teammate there, but it ain't over just yet. 3v2, make it a 2v2 now. Mutineers can still clutch up here, and I say clutch because a team kill is not what you want to see. Pharaoh and Havoc, Crim6, Illy. Dude, look at this, like, players trying to out-rotate each other. Havoc's gone through the back. Dead Silence is done. Has to walk. Maybe ADS the whole time to not give anything away. Yeah, he's probably going to have to do that. Bombs now going down on sight. It's Illy far, far away. Pharaoh now with the Dead Silence. That's huge on a crim. It comes down to Illy now. But where he repositions to, that's going to be the deciding factor. Well, I hey! I, I genuinely think that's probably one of the most predictable things there. As soon as they killed Krim, you knew exactly where Illy was going to be. Oh, I, I guessed Window, man. And so did Ferro. So did Ferro. I mean, he's just the snapped. general position. Is he was coming through the window, those stairs, or down low in that little doorway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, the general position, and especially in a 2v1 there, that was so well played. And it just highlights the the importance of winning that that first initial. Almost, It was almost like another first blood. You know, in a 2v2, it was getting that initial kill and making it a 2v1. Credit to Mutineers. 7 on 1 for Ferro. My goodness. He's had a disgusting search and destroy so far. Keys to victory. Shout out nameless. Shout out game fuel. Mid map presence now being felt. You're right on through from the Empire and they're going to charge right up the stairs. Shots, he's going to lead it. Frosty there on the site. I mean, he is in so much trouble. Clay's nade sadly takes out a teammate, making it three versus four. Illy with a wonderful kill on the backside, though. Oh, wow. And Havoc just takes the back of Illy's head clean off. We'll see that in the next round. Shotzi now with that lone bomb position and in and amongst all that craziness, the slight retake plays there from Awakening and Havoc have just made this that little bit more interesting. Awakening Wait. the new kid on the block, trying to find something in from behind the bomb site, and here he goes. The bomb looks like it's edging towards that site now as the plank does go down. That timer is going to be extended to 45. How quick will Awakening be though as he pre fires the door? Anticipates the push up top. The trophy system comes in. Dallas one step ahead, it seems. And now with the bomb down, the number advantage. Dallas Empire was certainly in a favorable position Ooh. to close this one out. But Havoc trying to defy all odds. He takes down Clay. Puts another magazine in the M4. And we're going to see Awakening find one. Shotzi! <gasps> Guess away with the his skin of his teeth. Wait, wait. Is he going to check the bomb? There it is. Shotzi, not to be fooled. But my word, he came so close to death. We praise the movement. It really did save him there. Awakening with a snap. Krim actually, to Krim's, to Krim's fault there, when he was bottom cafe, he missed a lot of shots onto Awakening, which could have made that a lot easier for Shotzi. Teamwork prevails, though. And the Cod Gods smile upon Dallas another round. It all Again. works out. <laughs> You got to watch that back for, you know, who was at fault. I'm sure it's not, you know, one to blame, but, uh, you know, shots oh, he got away so quickly. Awakening yep. there, missed a couple of shots, but he was trying to shoot two different people. But anyway, uh -oh. into round number five, straight through the doors, and it's been blown out of this one. Havoc this time does not get a team kill. He gets a kill onto Shotzi. Pharaoh's going to take down Huke. A good round so far for the Mutineers. Make it a great round here as it is now all up to Illy and this round oh. is over. <laughs> Man, I, it's cool to see the way that Havoc and Frosty have played that now with success when it works out. It yes. gives you the yes. trade there, the guaranteed trade to make sure that you've got bottom in control and like, it just gives your boys a, a, a real, you know, bit of relief there when it comes to defending the site. Man, good round there from the Mutineers. It's interesting to see Frosty get meleeed as well, man. It just freaks your aim out. Like, you just end up looking at the sky, you're looking at the floor. It's just so disruptive. This is a good search. Rightfully so, between these two teams in this position in the tournament. We hope you're enjoying the show, COD fans. Empire on offense now, opting to go towards A. No love towards the A site just yet. They've been hitting that B, and it's not going to be an avalanche this time. Lovely shots from Sky. He had... All the awareness in the world there just to take that. He holds it pretty much every game, every round. Skies gets it done. Now we play chicken. <laughs> a much slower round. I'll uh -oh. that for three here. Only shots he has gone down. Really maneuvering around here at a different level. 
stay level. I'm talking about height levels. Awakening takes out Huke. Now a four versus three in favor of the Mutineers. This is game five as Havoc and Awakening will fall here. Level in the playing field at a 3v3. Frosty over by the beast bomb site. Pharaoh having a bit of a tussle over that brick boulder, if you like, in the middle here. Elite is going to come off worse off. And Clayster trying to trade that kill out. But Frosty, it seems, in an untradeable position until Crim6 jumping around that corner from a 4v4 to a 3v3. And now Miles just down to a 2v2. He took that 2v1 situation so well for such a long time. This guy's dropping down there, making it a 1 versus 2. Pharaoh stunned. That's huge. Massive amount of information. And there's the cleanup kill. Dallas Empire. Stunning display of composure in that situation. Executed that perfectly. Krim gets the stun. It blows up. He's already on the second floor. Pharaoh had absolutely no hope in hell there of surviving that engagement. Frosty, good job again surviving the 2v1 situation with both Clay and Krim hitting him at the same time on the bomb site there, but his teammates weren't able to get across in time. They still had a fight to be taken care of there, and that's what we, we talk about splitting the defense on Ramazza. Sometimes it works out very, very well. Perfect example of it working out there. 3-3. Three, three. Boy, this is a good one. <laughs> Game 5. 3-3. Three, three. How close can this really go? Can we get a, a round 11? We're already in 7 here as... Pharaoh has nine to his name. Clayster, seven. Awakening up top, sneaking around, creaking those doors. Quick check of that minimap, and it's four players for the Dallas Empire over by B. A lone wolf Ooh. in Ilia A, and that lone wolf has struck first. Frosty and Pharaoh now. Trying to make their way in through just towards top A, but again, Illy's positioning. Makes it very, very dangerous. Sky's dead silence play. If he checks behind door number one, very lovely angle. That was it. He did check the door. The gunfight ensued. Oh, shots. He leaves his post at the wrong time, and Pharaoh finds two more. 11 and 3 overall in this absolutely stellar search and destroy. Three versus three. You need to get the bomb down. You do actually have full sight control over A. If they want it, they can take it. And that's what they're worrying about. Are we going to see... No, there we go. The gunfight. I'm not going to see these players exchange positions, but the time is ticking. 20 seconds. You have to get the bomb down. Dallas now having a back pedal towards B. Uh-oh, okay. Don't play with your food. 12 seconds. <laughs> oh, no. I think you might have lost him here. The bomb's going down. It's now a 2v2. Crimson trying to clutch oh! up. Frosty goes down. Crimson trying to clutch up. Pharaoh does deny. Now in a 1v1. Two seconds left on the clock. That bomb... It ain't down, and Dallas Empire will win. Huge credit goes to Crim6, and uh, I tell you what, a little credit goes to Clay. Tied himself in a Ran. nice he, position. <laughs> dude, Crim did a good job there. It was he such did. a hard angle to hit as well. Like that was, a, there was only a slither of the player showing, and Crim managed. He hit a few shots into the bomb site, which were essentially wasted. And if he had not hit those last two shots, the bomb would have been armed, and that would have been an entirely different round. Man, that was so close. Gonna so say, so myself. close. Dallas fans, the world over can breathe a sigh of relief as they take the lead. 4-3. Nades are out. Concussions go their way. Once again, everything thrown in towards B. It's a scary place to be in those arches. Just get everything thrown at you. Sometimes they bounce off those little rails, but right now, no one has fallen in round number 8. 30 seconds now has passed first blood yet to be drawn. That was a Dallas Awakening. Empire trophy that got destroyed there. Sorry, mate. You good? You're good. Oh, Shotzi. Looks a bit weird, but he's doing a good job. Awakening doesn't look good for his neck, but hey. <laughs> Dude, does it look? Shotzi, he's doing it as well. Uh, can we see? <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why, but I just did that exact thing with my neck. I'm did like you looking look up and like, up. Oh, wait, wait, here comes the reinforcements. Here. Dallas, they're charging the gate and awakening. Oh, he cranks his neck at the right time and he does get the single kill. Frosty now. Oh boy, here comes the Empire. They're charging. Clay, Double dips, he gets killed, but the trade's there from Illy. Pharaoh now from up high. He's got to go up against Grim 6 now to win the gunfight at the player just below him. Dead silence for Pharaoh as well. Perfect timing there. Bomb's going to be coming on down. Reinforcements not being found at the moment from the Florida Mutant is. Uh oh, there's a bit of friendly fire in the gun shop. Huke does come out on top, but it's a two versus one now. Skies and Ferro versus Huke. The clock's ticking. Get the bomb down. And no, they're going to trade these weird rounds where. Here comes the knife! <laughs> Ah, what I tell a you game what, if he this was still is! If he was still planning, I think the assassination might have come in there. That would have been absolutely incredible. Miles, though, this map mode has been played just once by Dallas. It was against Atlanta, oh, and they are currently 
undefeated. One and zero on this map for, for Florida. They've played it six times. They've split it, though, right down the middle at three and three. It's game five. It's round nine. It is four, four. Everybody Again. breathe. Everyone be cool. <laughs> okay. Everyone chill. Okay. One more I'm not round. chill. One I'm more losing round. my mind. Someone's on match point. This guy's up. I need a little kiss for good luck before it goes. Lucky Nate lands well. Awakening. Oh, he's so aggressive. Is he going to pay for it? And he does. Trades are there, though. Pharaoh does not want to take an early dip in this round. He's been so, so influential for the Mutineers. 14 kills to his name. Krim's watching him. Skies isn't going to back him up, but is Krim able to get it done? Lovely shots from the veteran there to keep Pharaoh at bay. 3v4. Mid-map posturing. Havoc! He manages to catch Shotty in mid. Now it's a three on three. So, so tense here. Everyone trying to be as quiet as they can. You see Dead Silence pop there. I think by number five, that's going to be Havoc. Oh my god, he's done it again. He's he, done it again. Dead Silence is still alive for him. Shoot with a kill on the bomb site, though. That's going to be the bomb carrier down. Havoc, can you find two more kills this round and put your team on match point? Dead Silence has finally come to an end. 30 seconds remaining. Krim's going to be watching either the gate or this archway. And that is that. Dallas Empire match point. There's just no way he's getting in there, making the kills, getting the bomb, planting it. It just wasn't going to happen. Uh, it, it's so crazy to me that both of the semifinals have been absolutely blistering. And we could have had any mixture of those four teams in the final here of the home series of Minnesota. And again, I think the predictions at the very start of the tournament was FaZe and Dallas would make it by a lot of people. Of course, Huntsman was sprinkled in by a few. Of course, many other teams as well. But Pharaoh's 14 kills right now. Is it going to be enough here? Potentially the final round for Dallas. Onward they go. Clayster overwhelming the site immediately. Krim trying to provide the support from the back. Frosty with the first blood. Pharaoh with an aid. And he's starting to make this look very, very interesting indeed for the Florida Mutineers. Dallas now. Stop the bleeding. Back on up. Lick the wounds. Beautiful angle there from Krim. Trying to just pull this back one kill at a time. Krim six. Nerves of steel. Skies upstairs. is going to go one versus one against Shotzi. And this could not be more tense. No noise made whatsoever. Dead silence and of course Sky is completely motionless. On the other end of the board there's a lot of gunfights going down. Shotzi and Krim have now taken control of B. Ferro knows they're out and about. And Havoc, Havoc, Havoc above he finds one. And Shotzi now in a one versus two. Can he do it for the Dallas Empire? To put them in the final. Shotzi has the bomb. Number two is Skies. He's going to be so close to him. Which way is Shotzi going to go? He's going to see him. Skies clutches up and we're going to round 11, baby. Miles, are you ready? Ah! <laughs> are you a, what that. just happened to <laughs> you? I don't, I don't Miles, what? Oh, <laughs> my word. What a tournament this has been. Another game five, round 11. Another. To add to what has already been a historic Call of Duty event, for a multitude of reasons. Not forgetting what's going on in the world, not forgetting everything that we are enduring thanks to this global pandemic. What a crazy time to be alive for absolutely everyone. And We're trying to have a good time here with COD, but I'll tell you what, this is very, very stressful. <laughs> Round 11. It all comes down to this. For a spot in the finals, the Dallas Empire... The Florida Mutineers, whether you're a fan of either team or just a fan of Call of Duty. Let's do this. All right, deep breaths, everyone. Crim6, 13. Pharaoh, 15. Game 5, round 11. Semi-final number 2 winner is in the final versus phase. Who's going to get that first blood? Who's going to be the difference maker, the X Factor? Placed a little bunny hop to the right-hand side and is going to find nothing on the stairs. A very different strategy here. We've seen B after B after B. Dallas Empire... And the veterans called for A. They've made their way to top rugs miles and nothing has come down yet. But Skies. Ooh. Hello, hello. Look out though from beneath the planks. Skies gets the damage, but you have to fear the deep. It's what's below. It's awakening. Waiting for just the slightest hint of where Clayster is. There it is. Bang! What a kill that was. 
I no, Illy from up great. top. The shots. He's going to push him back. The nade from Havoc. Oh my word. It is all falling apart. Three versus two, though. Huke not willing to go quietly into the night, though. It's Dallas Empire battling back here for A site control. Let's not mistake, this is a 2v5, technically, for Crim6 and Hugh. They've already dealt with two. That being Havoc and Awakening here. Crim on the bomb. Sky is going to cut him down. The final 10 seconds. And Hugh, there it is, the kill. He's got to get the bomb down instantly. I don't think he has the time. And whether he Number has the time, it. it doesn't even matter. The Florida Mutant is. What a series that was. They're going to the finals of the Minnesota Rocker home series. What an absolute gauntlet that was from both teams. A tremendous amount of respect for both squads. But in the end of the day, there can only be one winner and that's it, Florida. They will go on to play phase. Absolutely mind-blowing stuff. A game five, a round 11. It was the eighth out of 12 game five that we've seen this tournament maybe we'll get the ninth in the actual final incredible stuff congratulations to the mutineers miles you're laughing we've done game fives and only game fives it's kind of crazy um but so this is one of the best days of card i've ever had is so good I, it, it truly is weekend just everything to to kind of summarize what we've just seen it's kind of wild that we just saw mutineers as well take what both the hard points yep. and then the final S and D after losing the first S and D is crazy to me. But Mutineers, they're back in the final. This was a team that have done it before. They will be trying to match that two title championship. Of course, one more game to go. My, I, no more words. I think it's um, that was just incredible. <laughs> Let's have a quick look at that scuff play of the game. It wouldn't be a game five without one. And this was the end of the final rounds. I mean, perfect awareness. I think I managed to get a hashtag fear the deep in there is awakening from below. Just, just pulled up from the darkness and grabbed Clayster. I did like that. Oh, I I bet, oh mate. You're a cheeky one with those words. Know, I'll tell you that. You but, but dude, the whole I thought, squad. I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought Crim and Hugh had a chance here because again, as we watch this back, it was, you know, a 2v3. They killed two instantly, but Skies, a player which has been lights out for the Mutineers. He makes a huge impactful play, wins a gunfight, which at that point, when there was six seconds, he had to plant that bomb. Even if he got off the bomb and that play was spinning around doing circles, he was never going to win. Yeah. Barrow, I wish you would have got him for the assassination. Bro, I do, but I, I won't I hold it that... against you. I won't hold it against you because the final was was awaited. If he honestly, if he'd honestly gone for the assassination, I'd have lost my absolute mind. I would have, I would have screamed. Like I'd I would have, have had a noise like complaint that, from my neighbor. That would have been that would have been the sickest way to end that series. Like the most not dis necessarily disrespectful, but just the most fitting. <laughs> the most like the most just dramatic. The theater there, man. Like telling a crazy story. And for Pharaoh yeah, of yeah. all people who went absolutely huge in that search and destroy, I'd have blown up. I'd have flipped my desk i don't have to I, I i would you'd be looking at my ceiling fan now like this would have been a crazy crazy way of getting it done but man what a series coming up now cdl game day presented by game fuel atlanta phase going up against the florida mutineers here in what has been probably the best uh, the best home series i've been a part of i would be we've a part had of some awesome, wild but... ones mice we've had some incredible ones it's it's hard but that was incredible i've got to say one of it was sure. so good dude you know who it wasn't great for the dallas Fa dallas empire fans we love them though man we really do love you again for everyone we who's do. been watching we really do thank you for joining us when we come back after the break lottie's going to be talking to frosty from the florida mutineers don't go anywhere finals coming up